If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Today I'd like to speak to you on the subject of a mother's psalm. A mother's psalm. And let me go ahead and give you the outline if you want to follow us along in the bulletin. I do have six points, but uh, we will get to them quickly, all right? <laughs> Number one, do not worry. Moms, do not worry. And again, I want to encourage you today, moms, in the faith. I want to encourage you. Number two, keep on trusting. Keep on trusting. Number three, delight in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. Number four, commit to Him. Commit to Him. Number five, wait for Him. Wait for Him. And number six, forgive unconditionally. And, you know, mom's been gone for several years now, and me and my mom were very, very close. I had three sisters, and, uh, you know, my baby sister uh, was sick a lot of the time, uh, but dad worked a lot, and me and my mom got just really close, especially uh, I knew when I got into the ministry, uh, she was one of my best prayer warriors. And uh, I just cannot say enough about the upbringing that my parents gave me. Uh, we went to the church every time the doors were open, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And even in my teenage years, and especially my college years, my dad worked all the time, so when he got home, he would go to bed. But my mom would never go to sleep till I came in the door. And uh, all my sisters got married when they, they were 18 and graduated from high school. And uh, I lived five blocks from the college that I graduated from and never had to stay in the dorm. Uh, my mom, even when I was in college, and I, I'm almost ashamed to say this, she made my bed and made me meals when I was in college. So I got to thinking, man, why do I want to? I, I was on an athletic scholarship and I could have done that. But I was thinking, man, cafeteria food compared to mom's food. And then finally, when I was 22, my dad told me, son, you got two choices. <laughs> Either get out, get out, or get married. And I chose to get married. <laughs> All right, so I've, I've had a, a wonderful mom and a wonderful wife. And uh, we do, we just want to honor our, our moms today. They, they mean the world to us. Psalm 37 Psalm 37, and David uh, wrote this psalm pretty much uh, when he was older. And the reason I can say that is, look at verse 25. Look at verse 25 as we begin. I have been young, and now I am old. Okay, and I'm, I'm learning that. Uh, there are limitations to things that I can do. Yet have, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. Folks, the bottom line, moms, and, and folks, this, this applies to everyone. It's not, yes, we are honoring moms today, but everything I tell you today is for Christians also. Folks, God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. So we praise the Lord for that. Psalm 1, do not worry. Do not fret because of evil doers nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. One, do not fret. And three times in this passage that we're reading, the writer says, do not fret and do not worry. Folks, God is in control. And what I've learned is worrying changes nothing. Okay, it changes nothing. Uh, I've heard it described as a rocking chair. Have you ever heard that? Yes, you have. You, you are going through a lot of motion, but you are going nowhere. And what we need to do, moms, is to understand, folks, God has got this. God is in control. Hold your finger there and go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I want you to see this. Matthew 6, verse 25. 
Therefore, I say to you, do not worry. Folks, this is Jesus' words. Moms, this is Jesus' words. Do not worry. There are so many situations in life that we cannot change. We cannot change our kids. We cannot change our grandkids. But I know someone who can. So instead of worrying, we must learn to pray. To pray. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Folks, our society now says that so much. What you look like. And folks, we can't look at a person and judge them by what they have on or by their appearance. It's like a book. You don't know what a book is until you start reading the book. So give people a chance. Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? I know growing up, I was very small in stature, especially in junior high. I was, I was playing football, and, and I was a defensive back. And the only thing I had going for me is I was fast, okay? And I remember in junior high praying to God, saying, God, please make me taller. I went this far. You remember them old clotheslines that have the T's on the end? and the, Remember them? I would get on there, and I would... Uh, wrap my legs around them and be upside down as long as I could stand it, thinking I would grow. <laughs> Folks, it doesn't matter the outside. It doesn't matter how short or how tall you are. Folks, God cares about the inside of you. And moms, you are beautiful inside. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the fields and how they grow. They neither toil or spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field which is uh, uh, today and tomorrow thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, ye of little faith? What is he saying? He's saying it's just like, you know, life is like a vapor. And, and there are seasons in life and beauty is not just what you see. Beauty is truly inside. And here's the third time he says it. Verse 31, Therefore, do not worry what you shall eat or what you shall drink and what you shall wear. For all of these the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The song that we sang, give them all. Give them all to Jesus. Folks, every care, moms, every worry, every care that you have, give them to Jesus. God can change things. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the day, is its own trouble. Folks, you look at the world and you turn on the news and all you hear is negative, negative, negative. That's one thing about my mom that I remember. My mom was one of the most positive moms around. She always saw a silver lining. She always saw the good in people. So moms, do not worry. The second thing I want you to see in our text, is found in verse 3. Verse 3, keep on trusting. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Folks, your relationship, especially moms, your relationship with God started with trusting Him. So He uh, is work, trustworthy. And God is always there. God hears your prayers. Trust has to do with faith. And I thank God for the moms that have that strong faith. They don't always have to e express it. 
They don't always have to show that off. But so many moms have that trust and that faith in God. And it says, and do good. It's the little things that moms do. The little things that are unseen. The things uh, done when nobody else, uh, you know, most of the time they're the first ones up and they're the last ones there. Matter of fact, when Jonathan was just a baby, what I was trying to teach him was mama, 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 mama. You say, why? So that if he woke up in the middle of the night, it was mama, mama, mama. And folks, I'm telling you the truth. You don't have to ask a kid to say that. When they are hurt or they are hurting, they want mama, okay? I mean, my father, if I, if I got hurt, I remember one time I was doing a bicycle thing and we were doing jumps and I literally flipped over on my bike and scraped my deal. My dad, it was a Saturday morning and he was home. He looked at it and he says, ah, go wash it off and quit whining. That's what my father said. What does moms do? Come here, Mike. Come here. I'll take care of this. All right. She washed it off. She did not put methylate. My dad loved methylate, if you know what I'm talking about. It would bring tears to your eyes. Mom would put that salve on it and put a Band-Aid, and we would go out, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. What is he talking about? He's talking about feeding on His Word. I thank God for godly moms. I thank God for even when dads are gone that they would take the Word of God out and they would read it to their children. I thank God for moms that will sing Scripture to their children. That's one thing Lori has always done to our children and to our grandchildren. She sings. She sang Scripture. Proverbs 3. Look with me at Proverbs chapter 3. You know this scripture, but I want to read it. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Moms, trust God and lean not into your own understanding. Folks, there's a lot of things in life I don't understand. When it comes to death and sickness and timing, a lot of times I don't understand. But we have to keep trusting in God. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Folks, I'm telling you, God knows. God understands. Moms, God cares. God cares about you. God cares about your hurts. God cares about your families. He cares deeply for you. And then it says, uh, the rest of that, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I thank God for moms that fear the Lord, that stand up for what is right, that teaches our children the Word of God. And you think about it, folks, in Sunday school, especially talking about, and even in school, elementary school, I I heard a stat, each building basically has one, and I know there's others, but the average is one male in our educational buildings. So you see for children how important moms are. Moms are the ones that mold these children. Moms are the ones that influences our children. And folks, uh, moms uh, are very, very special to, to God. So do not worry. Keep on trusting in the third thing. Delight in the Lord. Look at verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. What does delighting in the Lord mean? It means loving God. It means adoring God. It means serving God. Delight. And folks, when we delight in the Lord, there are two things that are present in our lives. One is joy. When we delight, we have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. And 
And the second thing, moms, that we have, not only do we have joy when we delight, we have peace. Folks, this world is so messed up. It's in such a chaos. And there's just something about, I mentioned earlier how important prayer was to not worry in. But just trusting God and committing to God gives that peace that passes all understanding. And what we need to do, so many times in life, we dwell on the negative things. But there are a lot of positive things. I wish there was some newscast in America that all they did was focus on positive things. There are so many positive things going on. And again, uh, you know, delighting in the Lord is looking at the good in others. Giving people the benefit of the doubt. And our moms do a super job with that. Ephesians chapter 5. Go with me if you would to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 18. Do not be drunk with wine, which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit. Oh, moms, I, I, I love to, uh, I, I like to watch faces in the choir. And there are faces in the choir. You can just see the love of God and the Holy Spirit on them. And there's just something about that, that, that countenance of a godly woman. It is so, so important. Look at verse 9. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I remember when I first came here in our choir, in the old choir, in, in our old sanctuary, I looked up in the choir and I saw two men. There were two rows of ladies and two men. One of them was Mike Pope, and the other one was Jerry England. And I'm simply saying, you know, that choir stood out, but yet, again, there's something about women singing. Steve said about his mom singing to him. I remember my mother many times on a porch. They, they had a closed-in porch, and... and in, in our, our home there and she would be in a rocking chair and she would be singing the very same thing Jesus loves me I can remember that as a child and there's just something about a, a woman singing and making melody unto the Lord and praising the Lord and you could sense that in our families and it says giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, dwelling and, and delighting in the Lord simply means acknowledging God for who He is. Folks, we are very blessed. We are a blessed people. Moms, you are blessed. Okay, the Bible says children are a heritage of the Lord. So we see, do not worry, keep on trusting Delight in the Lord and commit to Him. Look at verse 5. Commit your way unto the Lord and trust also in Him and He shall bring it to pass. I've said it earlier, folks, when it talks about commitment, uh, moms uh, are committed to the Lord. So many of them uh, play vital roles in families. And I know in my own family, my dad passed several years ago, and uh, mom would keep us uh, informed of what's going on in the family. And what I've noticed since my mom died, our family doesn't get together near as much as they used to. And there's that glue that moms had and, and that commitment uh, that moms have to God and to family. Folks, there is an attack on our families. There's an attack. And, and I'm telling you, we need to pray for our families. We need to pray for our moms. And we need to pray for our dads. A song that I remember, and honestly, uh, if you remember when we dedicated uh, this sanctuary and there was an article in the paper, and he took, I, he took 20-something pictures as we were walking around here but the one he took 
Betty, if you remember, I was sitting at the piano. He said, that's a beautiful piano. Why don't you sit at it? And there's only one song I knew how to play. All right? When we were growing up, I took piano lessons, and we were talking junior high. Every Sunday, there was four of us that could play the piano. And every week, mine was the third week, and remember this, open assembly for Sunday school. And the only song I knew how to play was Trust and Obey. And, and this is so important. When I think of moms, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our tolls he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Folks, keep on trusting God. Keep on, ladies, keep on singing. Keep on making that melody in your heart. So we see, do not worry, keep on trusting, delight in the Lord, commit to Him, and wait for Him. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. Rest in the Lord. And I will say this, the last person in the home to rest is the moms. Okay? I thank God for moms uh, who get up early to cook, who, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, you know, take care of the children. And I know some dads do. I'm not bashing dads in any way. But there are times in life you, you can look at moms and they just look wore out. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. And I know uh, waiting uh, and being patient is uh, really hard for a lot of people. Matter of fact, I've said this uh, many times. I've said of all the nine fruits of the Spirit, I believe that is the last one that we master as Christians. And so many moms are so patient. So patient. And, you know, I was what I call in my life a late bloomer. Uh, Jonathan, my son, was a late bloomer. And moms, never give up on your children. Never give up. You, you don't know when God will get a hold of them. I promise you when I was growing up, matter of fact, I said this, when I had the call of the ministry in my life when I was 22 years old, I told my pastor when I went down and made that decision public, I said, I want to be a youth minister. And here's what I said, but I don't want to be a pastor. God has a sense of humor, doesn't he? <laughs> All right, and, and it took that growth. And, 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 and moms, to me, are some of the most patient people on earth. They are such encouragers. Even when, you know, I, I found the other day, I was looking for something, and I found my ninth grade report card. And I remember what my dad said. And I liked all the grades, okay, I enjoyed them all, A's, B's, C's, and D's. Now, I never got an F, but on this particular one, I got two D's. And my father was angry, angry. He, he wouldn't talk to me. He, he, I heard them talking this conversation. You know, it was one of them, we need to throw him under the jail deals, you know. My mom <laughs> come in and talk to me and, and just encouraged me. And she, she simply said, Mike, you can do better than that. I know you can do better than that. And, you know, Mom, help me with my homework. And she didn't do my homework. She helped me. She made sure I had those things done. And, folks, waiting sometimes is one of the hardest things uh, you moms do. Some people who had to wait in the Bible, the disciples waited 50 days for the Holy Spirit to come. Joseph waited 13 years to rule Egypt. And by the way, was in prison two of those years unfairly. 
Jacob waited 14 years to marry his wife Rachel. Abraham waited 25 years for a son. Moses waited 40 years to lead the children of Israel. And Noah waited over 100 years for rain. Sometimes in life, folks, we have to wait for things. And let me tell you what happens when we don't wait. It's a thing of good, better, or best. Sometimes when we don't wait, we don't have you know, the best that God has for us. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, 31. You know this. Isaiah 40, 31. The Bible says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Folks, there's strength in waiting on the Lord. And sometimes, uh, moms, I know it seems like I can't get everything done. I can't get everything done. But my Bible says with God, all things are possible. My Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we thank the Lord for the patience of our moms. Then the last thing, the last thing I want to share with you, not only waiting on Him, but forgiving unconditionally. Psalm 37, Psalm 37, verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. Three times it says, do not worry. Do not worry. Moms, do not worry. Exercise faith. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in the Word of God. And folks, anger changes nothing. Anger changes nothing. Uh, I truly believe my mom was one of the most patient and calm person. And <laughs> I think that's why God gave me, why God gave us, and when I say us, me and my sister Tony. All right. Tony was a female image of me, okay? So you can imagine how bad that was on mom. And, and uh, there were many times, you know, in, in life, it's hard. When somebody truly hurts you, it's hard to forgive. But I have found over the years, for some reason, God has made uh, moms and mothers where they can forgive more easily than others. People keep burdens for so long in unforgiveness. And folks, I have to go back to the cross when I think of forgiveness. The ultimate example of forgiveness was Jesus on the cross. Jesus on the cross. After all He went through, the trials and the scourging and the nails, uh, you know, and being nailed to a cross, yet in His dying words... His hands stretched out. He looked at mankind, a sea of people who spit on Him and said, crucify Him, and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And folks, if God can forgive us of our sins, we need to forgive others of theirs. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I want you to see this last scripture. Ephesians 4, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Folks, I believe when we don't forgive, we grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day. You're saved, there's no doubt about it. But folks, there's times in our life we have to just let things go. Don't hold a grudge. And here's what I found out. The person normally, or not all the time, but a lot of the times that you're holding a grudge on, they don't think anything about it. And you have this bitterness in your heart. Folks, forgive them. If they never say, I'm sorry. If they never come to you and acknowledge it, forgive them and go on. Ephesians 4, uh, verse 31. Verse 31. 
The Bible says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. With all malice. Folks, let it go. Let these things go. Verse 32 says, and be kind to one another. Man, moms, <laughs> moms have the corner on kindness. They really do. They use kind words. They use kind actions. Moms are tenderhearted. I'm just telling you, they are so tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you. I want to talk to the men as we close. Through Lori's fall for this last two weeks, and men, listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. Men, we take what our wives do for granted. I have never changed the sheets on my bed in my life. I've never had to bathe my wife and dress my wife. I never had to do these things. I never planted a plant. I learned there's four parts to soul if you're going to plant the right plant in the right place. And in these two weeks, I've learned how much she does for me. She spends half of her life waiting on me to get home. And there are times, there are times that I do not show the compassion and the attention that I need to show, Lori. And I want to publicly apologize to her because she is my rock. She is my everything. She's a great mom. She's a great wife. She's a wonderful grandmother. And I will never take it for granted anymore. Moms, thank you. Thank you for all you do. Men, tell them. Tell your wives how much you appreciate them and how much you love them. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for our moms. God, they are so special. They are so special. God, they, they are part of us. We are yoked together. And God, it truly says when one is hurting, we all are hurting. And God, I thank you for the special gift that you give moms. And God, I pray that we as men would be kind and we would encourage our wives and that we would help our wives. God, just thank you for what they mean to you and the kingdom of God. Thank you for what they mean to our families. So God, I pray you bless every mom here. God, I pray and I thank you for them. God, I pray that if there's one person, just one person here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, God, I pray that you would just speak to them today and they would give their hearts and life to Jesus. God, this is your church. This is your invitation. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just convict hearts. And God, thank you. Thank you for being here. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for our moms. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?